Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're talking NVIDIA GPUs, specifically about the unreleased 50 series or 5000 series. Now, initially we thought a lot of things about these cards. We thought a lot of the specs and a lot of the general design would be very similar to the 40 series in that the memory bandwidth would be about the same, that the GPUs wouldn't really be going from four to five nanometer, more of a optimized four nanometer. But in the last week, uh, some new leaks have sort of been validated and Nvidia actually commented on a lot of this. And it means some interesting things for anyone doing generative AI work. So initially there was lots of speculation that the next series would actually be kind of a half release in that this would be an improvement over the last generation but it was really just kind of a rebranded or rebadged uh, version of what would have been like a 4090 Ti. And fortunately, we now know that since NVIDIA has confirmed that they are actually going to deliver on 3 nanometer, and since TSMC, or Taiwan Semiconductor Corporation, which is the fab that produces all of NVIDIA's GPUs, has said, no, we are absolutely going to come through with 3 nanometer and have the capabilities to do so. We know that uh, the general trajectory of these GPUs is way different than we thought even a month ago. This, of course, assumes that the US, Taiwan, and China can get along pretty well for the next few years, and we avoid the doomsday scenario where the US continues to use TSMC as a political pawn, and in the case of China invading Taiwan, actually plans to unalive the entire fabrication facility that is TSMC, which is confusing because the Taiwanese just released a plan that says they would defend TSMC with anti-aircraft munitions from the U.S. if China invades. So hopefully none of this happens, but in the meantime, TSMC is fine. They have 3 nanometer anyway. So the issues of size, power, die size, and compute capability, and just how much more powerful these GPUs will be is totally different. And there are a few reasons why we think that. So the biggest one to look at is what 3 nanometer means. So this is a smaller lithography, which means the transistors on the GPU are legitimately just smaller. So you can pack more of them in the same space. And this means a lot of things engineering-wise. So for instance, if NVIDIA wanted to keep going with the balls-to-the-walls approach, they could just make uh, another absurdly power-hungry, powerful GPU and get the maximum gain in performance. But traditionally, NVIDIA doesn't do this. Usually they opt for better power efficiency and better thermal efficiency, which based on these new specs appears to be what they're doing. But what's cool is with a little bit less heat and a little bit more space on the board, what this allows for is things that were previously not possible, which in the 4090 series or the 40 series, you'd see that they still on the consumer end topped out at 24 gigs of RAM with a 384-bit memory bus. So basically that's how fast stuff in memory can be shoved into the GPU uh, etc. With 3 nanometer, NVIDIA's spec gets really interesting. So there's still kind of a 50 series, 5080, a 5090, and what potentially is a 5090 Titan or a 5000 series Titan. And this is cool because it might mean that we'll get a consumer GPU that has 32 gigs of RAM and a 512 bit memory bus, which is incredible. It harkens back to the days of the original Titan, uh, which like the reason this was cool was you got wildly good performance, and you're still paying for this performance, but it's not quite the price hike that you see with the uh, professional RTX cards. So like the A6000, the recently released RTX 6000, and some of their uh, proper like data center cards like the A100 or the H100. And when it comes to AI stuff, uh, the clocks, the IPC, some of these specs, uh, they mean different things than they do to gamers. And for a lot of this, um, aside from probably having to deal with the same power cable of the 4090 that was such an absolute nightmare, the things that we're getting out of this is potentially cards that have way more memory than were previously available uh, at price points that previously you just couldn't even touch. So the potential like Titan, I think, is way more interesting than the 5090. The 5090 should be interesting. What we know now from NVIDIA's kind of internal documents that have with their permission ended up out on the internet. We know that they're basically looking at probably adding about the same number of larger cores, which means more efficiency and likely a 20 to 30% performance bump. Also, we're getting these cards sooner than they previously thought. So likely September or August of 2024. But remember previously, they were only promising that anything was going to be released um, in three nanometer in 2025 or 2026. 
So it's cool to see, as far as we know, NVIDIA could change some of their plans here like they have in the past. But I'm really, really excited about another 5000 series card that looks as great as NVIDIA was really egging us on about a year ago. And I'm very excited. Now, what this means for lower end cards, I think is interesting. Generally, my recommendation for high end GPUs is to have something with at least 24 gigs of RAM. My GPU of choice here is the RTX 3090 and the RTX A5000. The 4090 is great, but it's a massive power hog. And if you're not doing training work, like for deep learning, and you're just doing generation work, um, the speed ups from the 3090 to the 4090 aren't necessarily that noticeable. Granted, I will surely be picking up a Titan 5000 series um, if this actually becomes a thing. But uh, yeah, memory bandwidth and memory size is still king in my book. And the CUDA core count is probably going to be pretty similar. So hopefully we get a little bit more news about NVIDIA. Let me know in the comments what your favorite GPU is, whether or not you plan to buy a 5000 GPU when it comes out. And as always, I hope you learned something and we'll talk to you next time.